Okay, so in this video, I'd like to go over some other continuation methods. All right, so we looked at load control and displacement control, and they basically travel uh, along a single axis in load displacement space. All right, so if we have you know, a load displacement curve for a system that looks something like this, right? Load control just marches up this axis and applies loads, and then we find equilibrium, whereas displacement control at one degree of freedom imposes displacements and then that calculates a load factor and we travel along uh, that axis okay but there's other methods that kind of do something in between all right so i'm going to go over two of those methods one is minimum unbalanced displacement norm or mudn all right and then the other one is uh, constant external work which i'll show in a second okay so it all comes down to finding a constraint equation on the change in load factor at each iteration. All right, so if we take equation 6.11, which was the change in displacement at each iteration within our Newton loop, we have the total change in displacements is delta UFR is the change in displacements due to the residual, you know, plus our change in load factor delta lambda times the tangent displacements, which are just based on our, our reference load. Okay, so this is that equation, 6.11. Okay, so, you know, one possible constraint is that we minimize the norm of this vector with respect to delta lambda. All right, so if we took delta uf transpose times delta uf, right, we would get a quadratic equation for delta lambda. We have delta lambda squared times the tangent displacement in a product plus the cross term two delta lambda plus, you know, this term here squared, which is a quadratic equation, right? Then if we want to minimize that with respect to delta lambda, right, we just differentiate this whole thing with respect to lambda and then set it equal to zero, right? That's just calculus, right? Okay, derivative calculus. All right, so to that end, right, uh, we take the derivative, right? So this goes away, that's a constant, and we get two times you know all this stuff here all right which is down here plus you know two times you know power rule two times delta lambda times all that stuff and we get that okay so this is a linear equation set it equal to zero solve for delta lambda and you get this expression right here all right and this is the change in load factor All right, with the minimum unbalanced displacement norm uh, integrator. All right. Okay, so the initial change in load factor at each time step, right, you got to kick it off with something. This delta lambda one is just specified by the analyst. All right, just, just like load control, right? You tell what's the initial delta lambda, and then this equation 620 here will uh, adjust that load uh, accordingly. Okay, so the second method is so-called constant external work, okay, where we just put another constraint equation on our uh, system to find delta lambda, all right? So if we iterate it, iterate it constant external work, what we're saying is that the change in external work at each iteration is just the change in displacements, which we have up here, all right, inner product with uh, the scaling of the reference loads, you know, delta lambda times P ref, okay? And if we want to make that change in work equal to zero, i.e. constant external work, right, we just, you know, substitute our expression for delta uf, I'll draw an arrow back down here, into this uh, equation, right? So, you know, we get a quadratic equation. We get delta lambda times P ref times, you know, the residual displacement plus delta lambda times the so-called tangent displacements, okay? And this gives us what? Delta lambda P, this should be transposed, uh, P ref transpose delta UFR plus delta lambda squared, okay? P ref transpose 
uft. Okay, so if we disregard the trivial solution, which is delta lambda equals zero, you know, this goes away, that goes away. Set this equal to zero, we have no change in the external work, right? We get delta lambda equals uh, this thing over here, okay? Where I, I put the J subscripts back in there, okay? So like the MUDN, all right, the initial change in load factor delta lambda 1 is specified by the analyst, all right? So like MUDN and load control, all right? We just say what the initial delta lambda is. And then, you know, the update equation 623 uh, will handle uh, the uh, changes in load factor uh, within the Newton iteration. Okay, so using these two methods, the, the load displacement response for our two degree of freedom spring system, which looks something like this. I'm sorry. We had one spring here, node, and then another spring, and then this spring here and then some loads applied to this system, right? And all these springs had some nonlinear behavior, all right, like this, all right? You know, imposing load control, we couldn't get past the peak, all right? And we looked at how, you know, load control uh, fails and then how displacement control helps us track the solution. But the MUDN and the constant external work also track the solution, and that's shown here, all right? So this is... UF2 here, nodal displacement 2 is right here, nodal displacement 1 is here, just plotting both nodal displacements over 20 steps with an initial delta lambda of 1, okay? And you see that these are about, they give about the same result uh, for this problem, okay? But generally, uh, that won't be the case, all right? Okay, so, you know, for most practical applications of nonlinear uh, static structural analysis. Displacement control usually suffices, all right, especially for like pushover uh, analyses, okay? But the, you know, the MUDN, constant external work, and other continuation methods uh, are necessary for analyzing structures with so-called snapback, all right, where, you know, this is, this would be something like snap through, which displacement control can handle, all right? But there's also a situation called snap back where you go back this way, all right? So that's snap back, and then this is snap through, okay? This one, this one also snaps through, but also back, all right? And MUDN, arc length, constant external work, those are designed to uh, track this curve where we have snap back. It's not guaranteed, but it's at least uh, feasible, okay? So uh, the you know pseudocode for uh, these continuation methods. This is just our standard kind of modified Newton loop, all right, uh, shown here. All right, this is Python code for MUDN, all right, in conjunction with modified Newton, okay, over multiple time steps. All right, so we're you know finding the or looping through time steps, okay? And then uh, within each time step, you know, incrementing, or get, getting the total applied load, getting initial residual, and then going through a modified Newton loop here, okay? And you see this one line of code right here, all right, does the MUDN update. Okay, and this this is actually modified Newton with the initial stiffness, which is what I'm computing way up here before we get into the time loop, uh, which is uh, the outer loop. Okay, but you know everything else is just the same uh, as uh, a regular load control or displacement controlled solution. If we wanted to use constant external work, we just change this one line of code to be whatever that update equation was for constant external work. Okay, but otherwise, you know, everything is the same. All right, so uh, thank you for watching.